Hello everybody and uh, welcome to Organian's Puzzle Box. In today's video I wanted to show you something very very interesting about the Atmos Forge which is a project that I have on Patreon and Fab and you know sharing it with the Cloud Forge as well. Um, it's it's basically my pet project for a pretty much an at, you know an atmosphere solution with clouds and everything that can wrap around the planet and you know eventually get to a point where we have a planet that we can actually land on as well. So right now you're seeing it in action over it's it's basically enveloping my procedural planet uh, project which it all comes down as a bundle so the cloud forge atmosphere and the procedural planet comes together so the atmosphere is currently enveloping it and we can actually have a look and see what's going on and what sort of settings that we got here to change all sorts of things like for example we could make the atmosphere grow quite exponentially into space if we would like okay and if you go sort of like further down here, you can change the wind. So you can make the atmosphere actually be affected by wind. So let's say it's, you know, we can get it to move into a certain direction by playing around with these settings. And now you'll notice that it's uh, starting to move. Let's just to make sure that we have, uh, you know, high enough scale. And also the intensity is quite high. And this will make it so that it's moving all across i think this looks really interesting for like a sort of like a stylite system of clouds if you you know if you're going for that but obviously if you're not then uh, if you're going for more realistic look then you may want to tone that down now currently the uh, cloud forge is casting shadows onto the planet sorry the atmosphere is clouding casting shadows onto the planet those can be disabled if you'd like to improve performance it's currently running at very high quality as well so we can actually disable that quality and get uh, better performing so for example right now it's in low quality and you know you can obviously tell but it's moving so much faster if you'd want there's a lot of uh, you know settings in here that we could change like the light the rotation of the light and, and and just how you know for example getting the stars to show up because now the it, the directional light is considered as being at night i'm also uh, going to be uh changing some other settings in here like for example we could increase its thickness. So if you go in here, the density of it, now it's a lot denser. And also because it's a lot denser, it's also a lot more performant because the system doesn't have to work with so many, so much opacity as it did before. So at the end of the day, this is not necessarily a system that works in real time as good as it, sh as it will do in the near future. That's something that's still in development, but uh, for now it's really good for cinematics and things like that. Uh, I wouldn't say that this is my final uh, take on it. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of, um, uh, you know, uh, updates that are being added to it. Uh, right as we that's right as we're speaking in order to get this to function a lot better as a sort of a planetary cloud system so let me just stop that wind because it's obviously way too strong and it's just changing constantly um i can have a look at uh, playing around a little bit with a cloud phase shift in there maybe make it a bit more like that right so it's a lot closer to the planet's surface and uh, uh we can now also enable some cyrus clouds if we would like uh, obviously they are just being squashed at the minute but we can increase its opacity so we can see them there as well um the this particular system is also controlled by the atmosphere height so if we actually um select the atmosphere to sell the sky atmosphere we can change things like the radius of the atmosphere which will just push these clouds very high into the into the um, atmosphere uh, right, so you got to be careful with these sort of settings because normally these are controlled through the Atmos Forge system right over here. So if we do it this way, you can see we're getting these clouds to just extending away from the atmosphere as we do it. Um, we also have things like um, intensity of the light if you want this to be a lot brighter. But we also have things like um, changing the um, height itself of the of the whole system. So maybe you know, you increase the height um, a bit too much, maybe something like that, sorry, the bottom altitude, but then when you also increase the height, let me just get that bottom altitude a bit lower, and maybe eliminate the cyrus clouds, now we can see a bit more through it, as you can see, if we fly inside the system, it, it's, it's quite wild, sort of like the effects that you can get as you as you sort of do this it's just a bit too thick now so we're gonna go and play around with the clouds phase shift as opposed to the ultra dynamic sky this uh, system that i've created here is a lot more uh how should i say a lot more tuned to loads of different um scenarios and setups like you know look at this here you can see the planet 
over there but you can also see inside the cloud shader sometimes it also does this so you just have to go and like uh, untick a box and it will be back up and running but there's so much so many things for you to be able to you know to do in here um, like you could literally create planets out of this made of gas basically you could say well yeah this is a planet it's made out of gas uh because that's how uh, you know that that's how intense this can be so we can change so many different uh, settings in here as well um we have a lot of uh, type of uh, systems you know for example like this okay this is really interesting how it generates these sort of like clouds sitting in space um or we can do it like that you know obviously there's a lot of different settings and you're welcome to try them all and uh, and find more and more different variations uh we don't uh, remember i've added this like diamond shape so this creates like more like shapes of diamonds into the sky but everything is also controlled for the mask so this mask can also be changed to various different settings um and this is you know again changes how the entire system works and performs and you know you've got so many different um types of masks added to it and some of them are going to make more sense in space and some of them will make a lot more sense on the ground it really depends on the application that you're doing. I'm hoping that this video kind of showcases just how fundamentally, um, uh, you know, um, fundamentally flexible this system is currently. And, you know, it comes with a Milky Way sort of system. You can add any your HDRI. Maybe you want something else in there. Maybe you want a Nebula or something. So there's a lot of possibilities and a lot of customization that comes with it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and uh, let me know if you have any comments or, or questions about the uh, blueprint um, and about its performance and so on. And I'm, I'm going to be very happy to answer. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you for watching.